Hey YouTube, I've never done a tag video on this channel, I think at least, but yesterday I came across one that I found quite interesting. It was the Living Abroad tag and I found it on Emily Bland's channel. I'm gonna put it down in the description, um, visit a channel, it's quite cool. So basically it goes like this. There are a few questions and I'm gonna answer them. They are for people that live abroad, but I'm living back in Germany now, but I used to live abroad. So I think it's still fair enough if I'm gonna answer them. Number one, what's your name? It's not Ambos, it's Martin. Number two, which country do you live in? England. Well, at least that's where I used to live. Uh, now I'm back in Germany, but the video is going to be about England. Or is it Great Britain? Or United Kingdom? I think I never really got it. England. Number three, do you live alone or with your family? I used to live alone there and I remember it was quite a drama when I left where there were tears and everyone crying and we went to a restaurant, it was picked in advance. We had a table in the corner and my sister started crying, saying we will never see you again anymore and yeah. In the end we know how it all worked out, but now that I'm back in Nuremberg and whenever I pass this restaurant I have to think about this evening and imagining us sitting there at the table. Number four, how long have you lived there? I lived in England for about five years in total. And I went there in 2005, which was one year before the World Cup took place in Germany. So yes, I'm a big idiot because I missed it. How many World Cups are going to be in Germany as long as I'm alive? Number five, have you ever lived in another country? Which one? Yes, I actually lived in Seattle, state of Washington, United States of America. Number six, how old are you? Come on. 38. Number seven, why did you decide to move abroad? Well, actually, I got a job offer in England and it wasn't really planned. I played video games at that time, City of Heroes, and the company reached out to me because I did some things for the community. They were looking for a community manager. They convinced me that it's gonna be lots of fun, and it was lots of fun, and it was an opportunity to make a profession out of my hobby. No brainer. Number nine, what was the worst experience you had there? Marmite. No, <laughs> bangers and mash. No, okay. Um, there was, it was around Boxing Day, I don't remember the year anymore, but I was checking for flights back from Germany because I visited my parents back to England. And there were cheap flights on Boxing Day. After the flight, I realized why they were so cheap, because it looks like Boxing Day, I don't know if it's still like that, but at least around that time it was like that. There were like no trains going after a certain time of the day, which was just after my flight arrived. And I landed in Stansted, I needed to go down to Brighton, which meant I needed to go through London. I was still able to get to London, but not any further down to Brighton. So I was stuck in London, didn't know what to do. You know, I could get a hotel or anything like that. But I had the awesome idea to call my current manager, which was the only person I know who lived in England, uh, in, England in London, and yeah, <laughs> she said, yeah, okay, I can stay at her place, and her kid was quite young at that time, and was <laughs> keeping me awake at night, screaming, um, lovely kid, and thanks again for letting me stay at the flat, um, really helped me out at the time, I didn't really... <laughs> I was confused at that time. I was like, my god, no trains going to Brighton, what am I gonna do? Number 10. Tell us about a sightseeing tourist attraction that you like and tell us a bit about it. Stonehenge. We went there, it's like in the middle of nowhere, and there are rocks, and they don't look that impressive at all these days with huge skyscrapers. It's more like the why are they there? And how did they get there? The mystery thing. So we thought it's gonna be a good idea to get the audio guide that you had on your phone or some phone-like thing. Went around and all the audio guide did all the time was telling us that they don't have a clue why they're there and what they're actually there for and how they got there it was all like just guessing. So they're rocks. No one knows why they're there. Still, you know, check it out. Number 11, do you speak the local language and do you think it's necessary to learn it? Yes, I spoke the local language and I think it is necessary. 
at least when you're German, because when I arrived there, pretty much the only German that the people or most people knew was 5-1, which was the result that England got, I think in 2001 against Germany. That changed after the 4-1 recently a bit. Um, oh, and some phrases from school. Um, but in general, I'm not sure that I could get around in Brighton by just speaking German. Number 12. What do you think about the country you live in and how well do they receive foreigners? I really liked it. Um, I got welcomed really nicely. I thought of it as a German it might be a bit of a problem, but no, actually people were really friendly. But then I also lived in Brighton, which seems to be a really open community. Then again, I have to say, get used to the pub culture and the extreme clubbing in Brighton with hen and stag nights all over the place. A horrible train network, at least I always had bad experiences with it. I think the country is a bit London focused and also felt some distance between the country and the European Union. And as I said in a previous video, I quite like feeling European. Number 13. Do you miss your family? Yes, I miss my family, but I also went back like two or three times a year. Number 14. What products from your home country do you miss the most? Beer and sausages and mixer taps, which aren't really German, but I really miss them. Number 15. What are your plans for the future? Do you want to live there forever? For a long time I thought I could live there forever and I think I could stay could somehow, but at some point I just felt like I couldn't fully adapt. There's always some part of German culture in me and I would prefer the German culture without saying it's better, it's just it's me. Number 16. What is something that you use every day and you think your home country should also have? There's no specific thing I used in England all the time and Germany didn't have, but if I could have the beach back, Brighton Beach, I would like to have it. Number 17. What suggestions would you give someone who wants to move to England? I'm actually planning to do a separate video on this, but there are a few tips that I've already given. Something like, be prepared for thorough checks when you want to get a flat. Or, check out the health system, the NHS. Try to find a good doctor before you need it. Embrace the pop culture. You can make really good friends there, but also be prepared for fancy dress parties. Choose your costume already now so that you're ready when someone has birthday and he's doing a Pirates of the Caribbean party or something like that. And number 18, if you could describe in one word your experience in this country, what would it be? Perspective. It actually helped me to see things in a different perspective. Good things and bad things. You know, things that I thought were normal in Germany and then they're actually good or bad and the other way around. That's something I really learned and I think everyone can learn when they move abroad. Okay, thanks for watching this video. It was a bit of a different video because this week was a bit hectic with, you know, going to Oktoberfest in Munich tomorrow. That might actually be when you already watched this video. And I've also done some holiday travel vlogs on my second channel, which is a German channel, but there are some English subtitles on the video, so you can check it out. Link is in the description. And now, let's go to the Oktoberfest. See you next time.